Hi everybody and welcome back to Beacon Pines. I am April and this is Tea Cozy Gaming. Now last time we were playing, ugh, some bad stuff happened. You guys, really, really bad stuff. The raccoon clone clipboard people just came after us, I guess, and I guess we're dead again. So it, all of these result in death. It's all death. Uh, we don't know where Rolo is. Um, Beck, I think, is the name of the cat girl. I don't know where she is either. That occurred to me after I stopped playing the other day. That we don't know where Rolo is, but also Kerr, a.k.a. Caesar, walked her home. Walked her home. Did he actually get her home? That is what I'm kind of scared to find out. Um... But yeah, we're going to go back because with this, we only had the option to fight, uh, which was not a very good option. I think the only thing we can go back to now, I don't know, we can go, I don't want to go back there if we struggle. Because I think this, yeah, we used all the options here. We're in this tree now, though. So I, if I use Tickle... We're going to go back here. Um, this is where we act, we pushed Iggy into the puddle and physically deformed him. All right. Well, time to bust out the... And last time we did weird or strange. Strange. Now we're going to do tickle. Well, time to bust out the tickles. Okay. Maybe Iggy doesn't fall in a puddle this time. Hey Tish, want to see something cool? Yup. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yup. Ha <laughs> ha, yup. Ha <laughs> ha, yup. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Ha <laughs> yup. Hurry up, hurry up. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Hurry up. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm-hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Oh. Oh, he splashed it on her. <gasps> Whoa. What a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. <sighs> Is it bad? It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh God! <laughs> what well, could be worse? It could have been that Chapter could have been so four. much worse. Ugh. The best policy. Just our hair. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully, he could make it up to her. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. Yeah. Where is Rolo? Oh. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling, but this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolo and I weren't just playing in Weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. 
and we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy and had a heavy bag dropped on us and I think it was a body and so we ran but we got split up and I ran home and it's all my fault and now my best friend may never come back oh wow just wow Roxy still exhausted and angry softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground and thought with a determined sigh she looked up at Luca it's not your fault Luca Rolo's gonna be okay I promise Roxy drew herself up I'm gonna fix this Luca go home but I want to help this is too dangerous for a kid I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little tree house you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. Ah, Rox is cool. You really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here, leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. Wait at the treehouse in case Rolo shows up. Oh, I hope he shows up. Do you have anything new to say now? Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Ah! <laughs> Why is he so scary? Why? He's so creepy. I hate this guy. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who were you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. What's with the music? Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank, and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Don't you touch me. Dang it, boy. If there is something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There's a shame lurking behind those eyes. What is going on? I don't there like the music. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. <laughs> Shame about what, Mr. Nuncreed? A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing. Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. 
We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I am sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said, Deep Engineering. Mr. Nancrete's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. Oh. A deep oh. sigh bellowed from his chest. Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncrete's hand cranked <sighs> down on his shoulder. But you Van Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? His eyes are crazy now. Ugh. We were all so close. So close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncrete mm -hmm. manhandled Luca into the phone <gasps> booth. Oh my god, oh my gosh. It's out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. Shit. Oh! <gasps> He's the guy in the hazmat suit. The floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule, plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncrede over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. No, 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 no. I knew it. I knew. I knew it. I knew that guy was creepy. I knew it. I knew it. I knew he was bad news. Oh. He said shit, though. So I assume he is the guy in the hazmat suit that put the dead body in the dumpster. Oh. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Yeah, there better be, lady. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. <sighs> what was the other? There was one thing in here somewhere that I still... If we go back up this... Was it this way? Ugh. Yeah, I gotta go back to the warehouse of horrors and we gotta struggle with who we now know is Nuncreed. Oh man, this is a story about... Struggle. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Oh, we got away Chapter from him three. now. Ugh. Everything's fine. No, it's not. The next morning, it Not was quieter time. than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Sorry for my sniffles. I have a little bit of a, like, um, sinus thing. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, Rolo had things to do, so 
I just sort of poked around town. I've set the jam down by the front door. There's two batches to drop off. Mm -hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the Bag and Wag. Deliver jam to Mr. Tolliver. Another for Mrs. Fratelli at the diner. Deliver jam to Mrs. Fratelli. Ugh. Oh, and Mr. Nuncrete. He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a particular interest in my jam. Ugh. There are some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. I don't want to. I don't want to see that guy again. Can we just not? Can we not, please? Just make sure Fratelli and Oliver get the ones on top. No problem. Off with you now, while the day is still young. But I don't want to deliver things to Mr. Noncreep. Is there anything new going on outside or anywhere? I don't want to. He's creepy. He's always been creepy. And now that I know he's hazmat suit guy, I know he's he's bad. He's bad. He will kill me. What is jump? I keep jumping by accident. I don't know how I'm doing it. Oh, I can jump. <laughs> like, I've been accidentally hitting E. Apparently that, that is the jump button. Oh. Hello, it's Juniper Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. What's that? I don't trust anything. Oh, that's just the basket. <laughs> and I just got even cuter with my little basket of jam. I am a cutie with my basket of jam. Going to deliver all this jam. Okay. Sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news! No more boring chores for me today. Okay, so this is the version... Okay, so... In this timeline, I went... Right, I went to explore the factory or the warehouse by myself. And Rolo had to do his chores. Okay, so Rolo's not missing underground somewhere, which would be in the telephone booth. Whatever's going on down there. But good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what did you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies. No. Alien zombies. What else could it possibly be? Rolo. I've got to deliver these into town first. We can catch up after. Ooh, is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you speak of. <sighs> Meet me at Mission Control. Roger that, Space Cadet. <laughs> All right. Let's go. <laughs> That's like bigger than him. This basket's bigger than me. I'm so little. I'm a little cutie. I'm a little cutie. That's just a sign. Where am I delivering? I've already forgotten things. Wait, can I talk to you? Hey, bug boy. Wait, watch your step. Oh, sorry. There's a whole family of beetles here. They've gone missing. I thought they just sort of wandered around. Everyone has a home, Luca. 
Even beetles. Luca checked the soles of his sandals. Hmm. I think we're okay. It's weird that they're gone. They went missing when the festival of preparations began. You think the noise scared them away? Something like that. Just watch where you step, okay? It's that fertilizer gonk. The beetles are... They know. They know something's happening. Nature knows. You can tell those jerks. It doesn't matter how many boxes they pile up. I ain't moving. Mm. <laughs> Go and to deliver my jams. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Hey, Dawn. Yawn. Hey, Luca, what's up? They got you on jam delivery, eh? Yep. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? All right, we don't know her. Yeah, came in from the big city. Her parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Kerr and Perennial Harvest, and the other is working for Eris Valentine. And the Valentines represent Beacon Pine's past. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as the town's future. Must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. Oh, we can finally go in here. Oh, hello. Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam runner. Hey, Mrs. Fratelli. Look at you. She leaned forward and pinched Luca's cheek. Yeah. You're all skin and bones. Is your grand not feeding you? She is, it's just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around in your little apron, taking orders. <sighs> the whole situation just breaks my heart. What happened with Eleanor? Break. Oh. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere, yearning to be with you again. I hope so. Few things in this world can keep a mother from her son. Luca shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's Mrs. see here. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. You tell your gran hello for me, Luca. Will do. And crossed off our to-do list. Oh, it's the mayor. Is there anything over here first, though? Hello, sir. If I could just be left alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that... Mm -hmm. Mr. Kerr has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. <laughs> Space. Like, mm, yeah. The truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being mayor or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family. For our legacy. That sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival... Just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. Aww. Good advice, Luca. You're a good kid. You're a good kid. Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time to chat. Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Mm. She seems kind of scary. 
It was very intense. Certainly. What seems to be the problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. Hmm. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes, that is the news of the day. But there was no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in the town's future, rather than any one family in particular. Hmm. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is a dangerous... If you finish that thought, I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. Thanks. My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Hmm. What you're eating today? What, are you, what horrible thing are you going to tell me? Anger from the past mistakes not yet made, and a glimmering hope for the future. He carried them in, he carried them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh heavens, what a burden to bear. Whoops. I'll go back up. Can I talk to anybody up here? No. I really, I really should be just delivering this jam. I gotta stay, stay focused. Deal with the task at hand. Oop. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Hello? Eep. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. I see you have something for me? Yeah, Gran had some jam I'm supposed to give you. He leaned in a bit further. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name on them. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, yes. The jam. Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. What? I shall put it on my store shelves post haste. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Of course. Of course. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. Why are all of these adults so creepy? Why is... is are you evil too? Are you also going to try to kill me? How do you keep the ice cream cold? We keep them on ice. Where do you get the ice from? I don't know. Somewhere cold. How do they keep somewhere cold? Cold? Look, Bert. Do you want some ice cream or not? No, I'm good. Hmm? Is there anything new in here? Does it just play the same video again? We all know Beacon Pines is a great- Okay. Actually, hold on, hold on. Let me just make sure that wasn't different. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one shop. Yeah, okay. That's the same. We saw that. We don't need to watch that again. All right. Okay, let's go and visit the creepy guy that killed us last time. Well, he didn't kill us. He just sent us to the place where we probably died. Mm, can I 
go to the library. I just want to go somewhere safe. Help me, help me. Of course, in this timeline, I don't know none of Creed's bad. Hey, Kato. Good afternoon, Luca. Can I help you find something? Maybe, maybe not. Try me. Well, there's some weird stuff going on at the old Valentine warehouse. Can't say I know anything about the old warehouse. But empty hives don't stay empty for long. Huh? Kato motioned to the book in front of him. The more I read about bees, the more similarities I see with people. If a hive collapses and fails, it doesn't stay empty for long. A new queen will set up shop pretty quickly. So you're saying it would make sense for someone new to start using the warehouse. Nature abhors a vacuum. <laughs> hey Jace. Oh hey Luca. Have you seen this issue? Have you seen this new issue of Hank Atomic? Not yet. No spoilers please. It's awesome. It's a flashback. No spoilers, please. We get to see how mild-mannered Henry Adams becomes. Hank Atomic, man of space justice. Jace, no spoilers. Oh, sorry. My point is, you're gonna love it. <sighs> All right, Jace, catch you later. Roger that, space cadet. Spoiling it for me. I hate when, I hate when people spoil things. The first. Uh, but what I hate even more is this guy. Got some jam for you, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, you seem chipper. Well, aside from being on delivery duty, it's a nice day. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. I suppose it is. So, do you want your jam? Oh, right. Usually Juniper drops those off herself. I guess she's busy today. Anyway, this is my last delivery for the day. Oh, in that case... Then Creed snatched the basket from Luca. I'll hold on to the basket until the next time I see your gran. I hate you. I hate everything about you. I hate your face. I hate your sweater vest. I hate, I hate it. Hey you. Anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple? Why? How old are you? Twelve? Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell ya you ask too many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? What just happened? Well... <laughs> hey, what a crazy coincidence! Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this, his favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh, um, and what is your new little friend's name? Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nellie, and this is Alona. We're Beck's parents. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. <laughs> oh yeah, Beck told me all about you. Already feels like we've known each other for years. So you both can stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. 
What Nellie means is that we just want this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Dinner? Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him, and he said he would love to. It's just... Wonderful! In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. Hm. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great and all, but they can be a bit much sometimes. Our house is the little cottage next to that big mansion place. Wait, you live on you live on the Valentine estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me by their big creepy gate. Don't be late. Or I'm back to square one on this whole gift on this whole friend grift. <laughs> Great, see you there. Meet back at the big creepy gate. Oh my goodness. Well now, is there anything I'm supposed to do before that? Like, was there anything else? Anything? Do I have any? Actually, do I have any new bait? Because that was part of this. I don't think so. Maybe. Oh, we got lots of stuff. We got lots of new things to try. Luca tied a small magnet to the line. Fishing with the law of attraction. Okay. Here, fishy fishies. Where do you think the lock is for this key? Now, why would we want to find that? Because then we would know the secret. Ah, that's no fun. The second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. Right now, this key could unlock anything. Cool. Okay, let's... See, now try... Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. Okay. Ooh, bracelet? Should we give it to mom? She likes jewelry. That's a sweet thought, buckaroo. But I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pond bracelet. <laughs> Luca wrapped some tape around the hook. Hey, you never know. a bunch of big words written on it. Let's see that. We regret to inform you that your application for property rights with respect to the Beacon Pines CBD and surrounding area has been rejected. Who is that for? Applicant Valentine Estate. Good. Good. Luca placed a sinker on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 
Ooh, message in a bottle. Oh. Malice 80 proof whiskey. Hard liquor for a hard man. Best leave that be. Takes a real piece of work to leave something like that lying around. Hmm. Looks like we could use some new bait. What do you say we head out and find some more? Alright, so I used everything I just had. Guess there's more. Is there anything? Anything to new anywhere? Hmm. Probably not. I just like to, I always like to explore everything. Because you never know if something new pops up somewhere. And I want to make sure we can get all the charms we can get. All right. Actually, let's go home for a minute. Like, I know it doesn't say to Telegram that we delivered all the jam, but maybe she'd still want to know. Or at least want to know where we are. Maybe we should tell her first. Maybe she'd be happy to hear that we made a new friend. That might be good. Is she even here? Grandma! Grandma! Grandma's pretty um, mysterious, too. Like, she's on the phone talking to people about secret, something secret, and Mr. Tolliver or whatever thought that the jam was something else, or maybe the jam is something else. Because the way he was acting, it was pretty secretive about getting jam, so I don't know what the grandma's doing. But she's not home, so... I'm just going to go ahead and say that I can just stop running around and uh, we can just go meet back. Who are you? You're new. Oh, it's Jeff. Good morning, Jeff. What's so good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Come on now, it's not all bad. The festival is coming up. Hmm. The festival. Old man Valentine used to put on cockamamie cockam shindigs all the time. And where did that get us? Well, it's perennial harvest putting on this one. And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it, the difference between the old Valentine company and this new perennial harvest outfit... Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit is the difference between this empty can oh, empty soup can and this brown banana but those are both garbage exactly <laughs> i like jeff i feel like he's he seems like the most trustworthy person in this town so far fun funny enough Okay. Hey, girl. All right. So, who all lives in that house? Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved in a few years back. The creepy little kid in the vest? That sounds like the one. So, just three people live in that huge thing? I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring? Pretty much. What a waste. My mom says that it used to be, a, be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the foul harvest. Okay, that's like the fifth time someone mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. Do, 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 do. 
And on to dinner. Oh, we get to go in this cute little house now. Most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? You looked like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle that. Beck took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Here goes nothing. Chapter 4. <laughs> All right. Well, what is chapter Dinner 4? Dinner with the Mood Wills. Dinner with the Mood Wills. All right. Well, that seems like a good place to wrap up this episode. Uh, next time we play, we'll dive into chapter four and we will have dinner. I hope they're serving something delicious. We will have to see. Uh, man, just some non creed. I knew, I knew it. As soon as I, oh, he's just, he was creepy the entire time. And then turns out he's guy in the hazmat suit and he's up to, he's part of this whole thing. Whatever is going on, he's part of it. And I hated him from the beginning. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised by any of that. But, and Beck is really cool. Beck is awesome. I'm so excited that we're having dinner with Beck. Uh, but anyway, that is for the next episode. This this wraps up this one. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of rambly at this point. I don't really have anything great to say as a send-off so if you liked this video just hit the like button so that i know uh in the comments down below let me know were you surprised that nun creed is evil were you surprised by this at all probably not but let me know let me know what you think let me know who else what other townspeople that you think might be in on this or if you have a theory as to what gran might be up to because she is a mysterious one uh, if you'd like to see more of my content, please do subscribe. I will be uploading very, very soon, and I will see you next time. Bye.